Hello and welcome to another AGD tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you a new technique that I've discovered that can allow you to create a sprite sheet. That's to say a screen dump of uh, all the sprites from within a game. This will allow you to uh, save it off as a tap file which means you can share it with other people. You can use it as a backup. You can transfer it into your new um, game and so on. Obviously I've looked at this in a previous tutorial using binary files but this actually uses a tap file and creates an image which can actually be more useful especially if you want to edit it in a paint program or something like that. So the first thing that uh, we'll do is look at the actual code itself and uh, see how it, uh, it runs. Let's look at the sprites first of all. Here you can see I'm using uh, terrapins and uh, I've got my little Terraprin sprites there. Here are the bugs and uh, everything else is in there. There's about sort of 50 or 60 images in fact. And um, let's take a look at how the actual code runs here. You can see it running and uh, I've basically done a screen dump. So you're probably thinking that this uses uh, assembly language but in fact it doesn't. It uses, uh, it actually exploits a little, a little something within AGD itself which normally is a problem but in this case we've managed to turn it around to into being something useful so let's uh, go step by step and look at how we do it. The first thing to do is to set up a blank screen so that we can dump our images onto it. So you go into uh, the, um, you press C, go into the screen setup, create a blank uh, screen here, I've made uh, screen 8 and um, it's completely blank. The other thing to note here is that uh, Block 0 should also be blank, otherwise obviously your screen will have pixel data. We want no pixel data whatsoever on the screen, so make sure your block 0 is also set as uh, empty. Right, once we've done that we need to add a control sprite. Here we're using sprite type 8 and um, I've set it to type 8. I've also set it to image 0, which obviously it does automatically, but uh, it's important to to, to keep that in mind as well. It needs to start from zero. And there it is. You can just put it to the side of the screen ready to run. The next thing we have to think about is to make sure that the game itself doesn't run. And um, so we'll go into the event editor and we'll remove, uh, well we won't remove anything, we'll just add some code so that the game itself won't run. We'll start with uh, the game initialization code. Let's load that up. And as you can see here, what I've done is I've set the screen to 8 and I've also set F and G to 0. That's my frame counter and, uh, and row counter, which we'll come to see a little bit later in the video. And notice then I've put exit. That means that nothing else is going to run. I now go to the restart screen and basically here I'm not putting any code, but what I am doing is pressing exit. Again, we just want to make sure that nothing in the game is running while we do our screen dump. So that's it, we just press exit. Um, we can also go into the main loop and do the same thing. Um, I don't actually have a lot happening in the main loop in this example, but you might have. So again, if necessary, just press exit, uh, type exit, and um, again, it'll stop it from running. Next up, we'll go to initialize sprite. So this will be code for starting up the sprite and we do need a little bit of code in here so let's take a look at how we set it up. As you can see here if type equals 8 let x equals 0, let y equals 0, let frame 0. Um, we could also actually write in here let image equals 0. We did set it up in the uh, in the initial screen but there's no harm in, uh, in being thorough so we make sure it starts from 0. And uh, we don't need two exits. In fact, looking at that, we'll delete one exit because we've already got one just below. And again, no other sprites are going to be initialized here. So we will um, basically just run that first little part. This is just so that you can keep your game integrity later on. You can come back and uh, delete the code and carry on with your game. Okay, now let's look at the main part of the code, which is in sprite type 8. If we load this up, we'll see I've got here, if 56 greater than F. 56 is the number of frames that I know I've got in, uh, in sprite memory. So obviously that number is going to change for you. If you're not sure how many to use, you can change the number and just run a test. It won't do any harm. 
um, just to show you in fact I'll uh, I'll change this number here and uh, we'll see if I change it to say 60 I'll save it off and we'll look again at uh, how the um, how the images are generated and as you can see it actually goes beyond the sprite memory and into additional memory it doesn't do any harm it's just printing it on screen but uh, it's not necessary so basically you, you just experiment with the number and you'll find the one that's right for your number of images that you need to put onto the screen we'll go back now and change it back to 56 there okay so obviously we start with setting the frame as F which is 0 and it goes up to 56 the next thing that we think about are these two variables here which is O and P and uh, I'm using those to calculate the line and column of the sprite on screen the reason for that is uh, as I mentioned before we're taking advantage of the fact that uh, when you use a put block in the same space as a sprite it actually causes a uh, graphical corruption on the screen so by using a put block and putting four blocks in a square around the actual sprite itself um, inside the area that the sprite occupies we actually create almost like a stamp it actually creates a copy on screen of the sprite itself so what that means is that uh, we put these four blocks it stamps the sprite into place and then we move um, across to the next um, the next space by adding 16 to y and we keep going across like that as you can see here we add one to f which is the frame count we also add one to g which is a counter that we use to know when we get to 10 sprites across so if you have printed 10 sprites i'm telling the uh, code then reset back to zero and drop down one row which is add 16 to x and uh, also set the uh, set the um, column back to zero as well which is y um, if not then just add 16 to y which means go and move across uh, 16 uh, pixels so by doing that we're actually creating a grid of uh, 10 rows each time as we as we move along 10 rows of frames um, in this case uh, just under six uh, just uh, six rows of frames okay as you can see there 56 and um, at the end you see there else remove so in other words when F gets to 56 then uh, remove the sprite and exit and that basically means that the uh, the whole uh, code is just uh, sitting doing nothing and it's as you can see here it runs through the sprites and uh, prints all the frames and that is pretty much it so all that's left to do then really is to save that off as a SCR as a as a spectrum uh, screen sh screenshot some uh, some emulators I believe might allow you to to just save that off as a tap in which case you could load it back into AGD but uh, in this case I'm using fuse and um, I'll save it off first as a dot uh, SCR uh, to do that you just go to the file menu and you choose uh, save screen as SCR and um, so there it is I've already saved it once uh, I'll just uh, save over it terrapin sprites dot SCR obviously give your own name to a file there uh, save that and it's ready to go then into uh, something another program such as ZX paintbrush you could also save it as a PNG load it into uh, Photoshop something like that um, it's uh, very flexible once you've got it into this format so there you see so use a PNG but I'm going to save it as an SCR and then we're ready once we've got that saved we can then um, load it into uh, as I said ZX paintbrush so the next part we'll uh, move over and we'll uh, load up ZX paintbrush and uh, we'll have a look at the uh, file in there and look at how we save it off as a tap so let's uh, move over now to ZX paintbrush here it is we've got an empty file and uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is pretty straightforward really we just go to file open and we choose the file that we've saved off which is of course the SCR there it is and uh, there it is basically exported safely and happily 
ready for us to change if you want to you can now of course edit your sprites there as a whole group which is great could be useful if you want to create some uh, bigger sprites as well more than use more than 16 by 16 and um, yeah all you have to do then is save it off again as a tap so you go save as I'll go to the menu choose to save it as a tap there are lots of formats there that you can save it as as well but obviously AGD is compatible with a tap we can use it for the scratch pad so I've saved it off there and um, it's ready to be re-imported so let's take a look at how we do that then next I'll uh, move over to uh, a copy of fuse here which I've got open and this copy is uh, a fresh copy nothing has been uh, nothing has been added I've created a couple of frames of empty sprites which we'll see here so in order to import now we need to put the tape that we've just made into the uh, virtual tape player so open the tape here terrapin sprites dot tap that's open and then to uh, load it in I just press L on the keyboard do I want to load the scratch pad yes I do and here hey presto it's now in AGD so getting these images now into the sprite uh, editor is very straightforward you probably know about this but I'll go through it anyway you use the arrow keys to highlight the uh, sprite that uh, that you want the image that you want there and you press the key 0 and it says block copied to clipboard and all you have to do then is just press K which is paste and that will paste it into position and now I'll go to the next frame to load the scratch pad or to bring the scratch pad up without loading you just press G so you press G here now I highlight the one I want press 0 back in press K OK press F to go to the next frame press G again to load the uh, the scratch pad go to the next frame press 0 and once more press K so I've got full access there to this tap and as you can see I've imported the sprite successfully there it is animating away happily and um, that is pretty much it really um, that's the system that I've come up with most recently I think you'll find it's quite efficient quite helpful good way to archive old uh, sprites and also share them with your friends so uh, yeah thanks again for watching I hope that you found that useful take good care of yourselves keep having fun with AGD don't forget to like and subscribe it's always appreciated and I'll see you hopefully soon in another video thanks a lot bye